Welcome to this short tutorial on how to take an exam on Moodle. Now to begin with, you're going to, of course, log in and you do that. Once you have logged in, you're going to, of course, get to uh, a main screen that shows, for instance, recently accessed courses. Now, in order to take an exam, imagine that you can't see any of this right here. What you're actually going to do is you're going to click on the three bars in the top right hand corner and go to Site Home. Once you have done that, you're going to click on the button that says Fakenhout Le Orientier Lehrline and you'll click on English. And finally, you're going to click on Online Exams. Now, as of right here, you'll be able to see several exams, but you'll only be able to access the exams that you've signed up for and that you've been given permission to enter. It's important to remember that the exams take place at the same time as they are located on your exam schedule, so you cannot take them whenever you want. Just like normal exam rules, you have to enter the exam at a specific time and the exams have to be completed at a specific time. So as we can see here, these two exams are not accessible. However, this space right here online exam for students, this is where we're going to practice taking an exam. I'm going to switch my role, of course, to yours, which is student, and I'm going to start by taking the practice online exam. As you know, how to take an online exam, that is where this video is located. So once you get to the practice online exam, you can see that there are two parts to this practice online exam, and you must begin with part one. Now before you begin, it's important to realize to, that you have to read the instructions. As you can see here, you'll have five minutes to complete the following questions. All questions not answered at the end of the five minutes will automatically be closed off. They will be submitted, so if you haven't answered them, then of course they're counted as wrong. Once you have answered a question, you cannot go back. You can also not move forward to see further que future questions until you have answered all the questions on the page. So what that means is, is that you're going to be given a question, and you can't move forward, and you can't move back. In order to enter the test, you click on Attempt Quiz Now. And then, of course, it says right here, this qu quiz has a time limit of five minutes. Time will count down from the moment you start your attempt, and you must submit before it ex expires. Are you sure you wish to start now? You, of course, hit Start Attempt. Now, as we can go through here, we can start, I'm just going to randomly click on answers. And as you can see right here, here are the 10 questions, but I cannot click on any of them. You can also see right here that there is time left, which is telling me how much time I have left until the next uh, exam starts. So we click here, I'll just choose some random answers. And as we go through them, it's also important for me to uh, mention that the tests are made up of a test exam database. That means that here you have 10 questions, but in total there are about 40 questions in this database for this practice exam. That means that while you and a classmate are taking an exam, there's a chance that you will not even get the same questions. And if you do get the same questions, A, B, C, and D, are going to, of course, be placed into a random order. Also, all the questions are scrambled up. So question six for you may not be a question at all for another student, or it may be a question 10 for one student, question four for another, etc. So we're gonna go through this really quickly through these 10 questions. Of course, here we have more Here we also have a and now we're going to hit finish attempt. Now once it says here it says finish attempt if I hit return to attempt it's only going to let me see the previous question. If I try to go back then it won't. So I'll hit finish attempt and once I've done that, I'll hit Submit All and Finish. And this must be submitted, as you can see here, by 2.45 p.m., which means I only have two minutes. And if I hit Return to Attempt, I can only see question 10. 
So once I hit this, it's going to ask me for confirmation. Once you submit, you will no longer be able to change your answers for this attempt. You hit submit all and finish. And as you can see right here, it shows me this, but it says no more attempts are allowed. So you're not allowed to do this one more time. And in order to keep people from helping each other, seeing the answers afterwards, you'll also not be able to see your answers. This can all be done at the end when the teacher allows you to do your digital uh, review of the exam or in Zaha. Then we hit back to the course, and now we begin on practice part test, uh, test part two. You, of course, have to read the instructions. In this section of the exam, you will receive four short essay questions for this part of the exam. You have 30 minutes to complete. You can only view one question at a time, and once you have answered the question, you cannot go back to it. <coughs> so, of course, right here, we have 30 minutes to attempt this. We hit start attempt. And once again, it's very similar. We have four questions here. Describe in 200 words or left what the CES, CEFR is and how teachers should use it in their daily educational practices. And I'll do the same thing for all of these. Of course, all of these questions, by the way, are questions that are uh, used in uh, various first year courses. So you should be able to answer all of them. And of course, now I have finished the attempt. And once again, I, if I hit return to attempt, all that I can do is I can go back and see question four. If I click here, I cannot see question one, two, or three anymore. So I hit finish attempt. And once I do that, I'm going to hit submit all and finish. And of course, it says no more attempts are allowed. It means that I have finished it at 2.44 and I can hit back to course. And if I click here now, it will now tell me that the exam has, you can see here with these two green checks, that the exam has been completed. Now, there are a few other points that you have to remember when taking an online exam. One of them is that uh, the computer uh, registers who is taking the exam. And of course, all of the exam answers are checked using a plagiarism system. So if the computer believes that there is plagiarism going on, the computer will notify the teacher. If that is the case, then the teacher will notify the exam commission and will not notify you. If you have any other questions about taking an online exam, and this is about procedural, how it works, uh, what browser you need to use. And by the way, you can use any browser, but any questions like that, you can click here on ask questions about exams. If there are specific questions about specific exams, the way that they look, please contact your teacher. Thank you very much, and I hope that this has been helpful.